Yeah, it's deeply concerning because ordinary folks will accept what the president says, what the attorney general says, and that hurts our ability to be trusted as FBI agents in courtrooms and at doorways. So it's a very bad thing. You know, we were talking about the op-ed that you wrote yes. just, just a couple weeks ago. And I encourage people to, to go back and there? read it. Where yeah, to begin, Nora? Because you, you essentially go through, you say, how could Mr. Barr, a bright and accomplished lawyer, start saying these things? You talk about Rod Rosenstein. And then you say, what happened to these people? And they said, more often, proximity to an amoral leader reveals something depressing. Mr. Trump eats your soul in small bites. No, and I'd like to add to that. It starts with your sitting silent while he lies, both in public and private, making you complicit by your silence. In meetings with him, his assertions about what everyone thinks and what is obviously true wash over you unchallenged. I'm curious, to, to, to Nora's question, were you at home mad one day and just say, I have to say something? Where did no, this come I wasn't from? mad. I was actually kind of depressed watching people of accomplishment, very bright people, act in ways that are shocking. The Deputy Attorney General of the United States quoting approvingly Donald Trump on the importance of the rule of law. Really? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of folks were asking me, what happened to these people? And I don't know for sure, but I've seen it up close from four months of working near Donald Trump, and I've seen him wrap people in this web of deception and delusion, and I've seen it shape them. I've seen some great people stand up to it, but others Explain been pretty... Explain how that easy. happens. How do you believe he wraps people in a web of deception? Well, first of all, when you sit with him, he'll just tell lies where he's not asking for your, your reaction to it. He'll just talk about how he had the largest inaugural crowd in history, much larger than Barack Obama's. And if you don't jump in and interrupt and contradict the president, you feel like you've kind of agreed with him. And these lies wash over you over and over again. And then the next step is you sit at a cabinet meeting and everybody praises the leader. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, he's attacking the institution you represent. Someone like Bill Barr always said the attorney general has to stand up for special prosecutors. And suddenly you're not doing that and you find yourself trapped. You do point out that but, the defense secretary Mattis did not do that. Yes. And those, he was one of the exceptions in that rule. Right. Defense I said secretary. amoral leaders tend to reveal character. In the case of Jim Mattis, revealed sterling character. Yes. The former FBI assistant director of intelligence, Kevin Brock, turned your phrase around on you, though. And he wrote, he himself ate away at the soul of the FBI, not in small bites, but in dangerously large ones. I don't really have a reaction to that. No. Talk to people inside the FBI, and they'll be better able to evaluate what but I do. But do you, I, I wonder about that too, John. Do you feel in some level that your credibility has been hurt because Democrats and Republicans have criticized some of your actions and decisions? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But that the only thing I'd say to folks is, you say, yeah. sure, just read what I write, listen to what I say, and evaluate it. How are my facts? What does my reasoning seem like to you? If you don't like it, if my facts are wrong, don't listen to me. I, I don't think they are, though. I thought yeah. maybe we should just end on, because you have a new preface in, in your book in which you say that you sort of pose the question, are we going to be okay? Yes. What's the answer to that? Yes. Because American history shows us that we always have periods of retreat and pain after periods of tremendous progress, and we recover. Because there's a ballast in America, and that's our values. The great middle of America represents our values, and they stir every so often. And I hope they're stirring now. I see signs of it and are going to vote their values. Yes. Back to what you said about the facts. It's been said you're entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled to your facts. And to your point, read the report and look at the facts. Yeah, truth is a real thing. Yes.